there welcome back to my channel my name is Shelby and today I'm going to be doing an author spotlight for Taylor Jenkins Reid I just finished up my last book that I had to read and I've read all of her works and I just wanted to do a video to just talk about each book that I've read by her she is one of my absolute favorite authors and I'm sure you guys have already heard of her she's published six books and one short story Four of are like romance and two are more historical fiction and then the short story is kind of a contemporary just women's fiction read and I'm just going to go in order of publication. I'll link them all down below and let's get right into it. So the first one I have to talk about is Forever Interrupted and this was the first Taylor Jenkins read book I read and I loved it. This was about a couple named Elsie and Ben. They got married after six months of dating and within a week of getting married Ben dies and Elsie is left to pick up the pieces and Ben's mother named Susan I believe she comes into town to handle his effects and he she learns that Ben and Elsie eloped and she had no idea who Elsie was and so there's a lot of drama that goes on there and it alternates between you learning about Elsie and Ben and their relationship as well as the aftermath for Elsie and her relationship with Susan and it is really touching not only her love with Ben but also her mother-daughter type of relationship with Susan and they are able to heal one another even though they don't really know each other and this one I remember just got me so hard and it was a definite tearjerker and I definitely gave this one five stars I think I gave all of her books about five stars above four that's for sure and then the next one I have to talk about is After I Do, and this one I read like a week or two ago. Really liked it. I don't know, it took me so long to get to it. But this follows a married couple named Ryan and Lauren. They've been together since college when they were 19, haven't really dated around. And now they're 30 years old, 11 years later. And they've been married for, I think, eight years or something, nine years. And they aren't really in love anymore. They don't love each other. And instead of getting divorced because they really don't want to, they choose to take a one year separation. And that means during that one year they'll live apart and they won't communicate. And it's time for them to find themselves. And Lauren goes on this endeavor and dates and discovers what she likes and what she doesn't like. And they come back together at the end of the year and they decide, are we going to stay together? Or are we going to get divorced? And this one I liked so much. I wasn't expecting to. And they learned they could live without each other. And you have to decide, is being able to do something a reason to do it? Or are you choosing to be together? So I thought that was just so, so interesting. And I really liked this one a lot. And I definitely gave this one five stars. It was really impactful. And it was so, I related to it so hard as a married person. Um, yeah, I just absolutely love this one. And then the next one she published is Maybe in Another Life. And this one reminds me of the movie Sliding Doors, if you've ever seen it. It reminded me of it a lot. And this is about a girl named Hannah. She is in her 20s and does not have her life figured out. So she moves back to live with her best friend in, I think, L.A. And when she first gets there, they have a welcome home party at a bar. And at the party is her ex high school boyfriend and she's kind of still in love with him and he's kind of into her and at the end of the party she has two choices go home with him or go home with her friend and just kind of move on and it basically discovers what she would do if she chose each option so alternating chapters of each choice and what was interesting is you are rooting for one person in my opinion and then at the end you don't really care who she ends up with you just want her to be happy and I can't really decide which ending was better um, if she chose to go home with her friend or if she chose to go home with her ex-boyfriend and I loved this one I love stories that kind of question um, kind of like sliding doors what would one moment in your life change like would it really change the trajectory of your life or would it really be the same and it's because of who you are you choose the same things so I found this really interesting and it was a really cute like romantic book but I think it had a lot more substance than that and then the second one I read by her is One True Loves and this one is about a married couple named Emma and Jesse they're high school sweethearts they got married a year ago and now it's their one year anniversary and they are separated because Jesse is I think he does something where he has to travel and his plane goes missing and he's presumed dead and then time passes and the wife Emma moves on and she rekindles a relationship with a high school guy she knew named Sam. 
they get engaged and then right before their wedding all of a sudden Jesse returns from a deserted island. He was stranded on an island and he's super injured and scarred and he expects to be married to Emma and he wasn't expecting that she would be engaged and she has to decide if she wants to stay engaged to Sam or if she wants to go back to her husband Jesse and it's a really hard dilemma to handle and this one again also had me crying a lot it was really good and it makes you question like what is the right choice and is there a one true love for everyone or is it kind of just happenstance so this one really really good and then I this I think is my favorite and it's a lot of people's favorite it is the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo this one is like a contemporary historical fiction and it follows this journalist named Monique and she is given an opportunity to interview one of Hollywood's most famous starlets, an old Hollywood starlet named Evelyn Hugo. And she is super famous for being an actress and a public figure. And she's had seven husbands over her lifetime. And she basically says, I will only give my story to Monique and you can write my story in a book. And so Monique does, and she learns all about Evelyn Hugo. And we get to learn how she was as a teenager, how she got into Hollywood and about her seven husbands. But it is about so much more than that and she's hiding some secrets that she wants to reveal to Monique and she wants her to publish them. And they are pretty shocking and this was amazing. I felt like Evelyn Hugo is a real person and a real celebrity. And this one is amazing if you haven't picked it up already. And then the next one was her short story called Evidence of the Affair. It's about a woman who discovers that her husband is cheating on her. She discovers letters from his lover and he realizes the lover is married. So she reaches out to her husband's lover's husband. So the one who's also being cheated on. And she says, look, our spouses are having an affair. If you get letters from my husband for your wife, can you show me them? And they exchange letters back and forth and you're seeing the exchange letters between the other partners, the other spouses that originally had the affair. And this relationship is forming between the spouses who are being cheated on. And this was really good. It was pretty short. It only took like an hour to read and I highly recommend it. I don't want to say really much more than that. And then the last one I have to talk about is Daisy Jones and the Six. I just read this one. It came out in March and I really liked it. I didn't like it as much as The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but I'm comparing it to that because it is kind of a contemporary historical fiction. Um, it is about a band called The Six that were popular in the 70s and their frontrunner's name was Billy. And he was just like any other 70s musician struggling with sleeping around um, drugs and alcohol while he's married and they bring Daisy Jones this really free-spirited really talented rocker chick who has a super strong personality they bring her into the band and her and Billy sing together and it is about what happened when she joined the band what happened before and what happened after and it's told in interview format um, between all the band members and hopping back and forth and it was really good I really enjoyed this one I gave it 4.25 stars it, like I said it wasn't as good as some of her other books but I really enjoyed it it reminded me of Almost Famous and the newer movie A Star is Born it reminds me a lot of those movies and thoroughly enjoyed it especially if you like 70s rock music this has all original lyrics in it so I thought that was pretty cool so those are all of the books that she has published I highly recommend her if you are a fan of women's fiction, she writes really good women's fiction. If you're a fan of historical fiction, she writes that too. She writes a really wide range of genres and I like that about her. Um, and I like how they're not just surface level, level romance books, they are deeper than that. And I think that's what I love most about them is they leave a lasting impression with me and I don't ever forget what they're about, which sometimes with romance, you kind of read it and move on. But these have a lasting impression and I absolutely loved almost every single one of them. Let me know what you've read by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And if you have any other recommendations that are similar to her, I'm always up for recommendations. I will link them all down below and I will see you guys on my next one. Bye.